Welcome. Uh, this is a compendium to the recent webinar with Carolet Technologies. I'm going to go through quickly and demonstrate how we can use TechBot 360 to evaluate the results from Carolet. Let's start by opening the results. Carolet currently will export a PLT format file. Uh, that file will be available when the simulation is completed. Uh, it will be updated along the way but uh, I put it here on the desktop. The uh, case in this case just takes on a name. Uh, you can modify that name if needed but let's take a look at the base case to start with. Alright so here's the basic geometry of the race car that we evaluated. This is the Renault uh, racing team case. So a couple things quickly. You'll notice that the uh, origin of rotation is based on uh, the complete fluid domain. Uh, I'm going to change it by selecting a point near the uh, middle of the race car and hitting the O key. That will just change the rotational axis. Let's go ahead and quickly take a look at some of the surface quantities. So I will right click on the wheel, but let's go ahead and look at both wheels simultaneously. And I'm going to show the pressure on the wheel. So there's the pressure on the wheel surface. We'll also include the front wing and rear wing and look at the pressure on there as well. The main body, given the fact that it's a symmetrical solution, although the geometry extends into um, the symmetrical piece of the solution, the actual domain stops about the midpoint through the race car. Subsequently, if we generate a slice and we put that slice in the y direction, you'll notice that we, if I try to put the slice uh, outside the fluid domain, uh, it won't show up. This basically is about as far over as I can get. Okay, so we want to evaluate the vector field. So to evaluate the vector field, I can do one of two things. I can either turn on vectors. What this will do is turn on the vectors, as you can see, on the surfaces. Or if I want to, I can just go into the vector variables and just make sure that it's selected U, V, and W. The next thing I'm going to do is just look at the vector field on the slice. So select the slice and right click. I'll turn off the contour, turn on the uh, vectors, and um, just make sure here that the slice is where I want it. Okay. So as I said, if you're too far over, uh, you won't see the vector field. So there are the vectors. It's basically showing one vector per point in the grid. If I want a second slice near the uh, inlet uh, through the wings, I hit shift and that'll create a second slice so I can look at the relative vectors between the two. I like this view, so I'm going to use it as a base for a, um, a second view. So I'll hit copy. I will add an additional page, um, rename it by double clicking, and I'll just call this second view. From here I can press Control V, that'll put the uh, frame from the first view into the second view. One thing you'll notice is that there are two frames, so I'll bring this one to the front just so you can see it. Uh, I don't need this extra frame, I'll delete it. Um, what I'm going to do is change the slice. So the current slice is in the Y direction, but I want that slice to be in Z. So I will type the letter Z. There are two slices now shown and I can look at the vector field. In this case it's up in the far field. Not particularly interesting. Uh, if I turn off show start and end, just look at primary, uh, I can do that as well. And then we'll just move it down here. So again you can evaluate uh, the vector field relatively easily. What I'm interested in though is velocity magnitude. Velocity magnitude was not included in the original simulation. If I go to data set info you can see I have um, density vector variables, temperature, um, and a couple of other variables that are uh, output from Carolet. We want to calculate velocity magnitude. So we'll go into Analyze, 
we're going to set up the field variables for pressure and density. So for pressure we'll use pressure, for density we'll use density. Uh, that isn't necessary for um, isn't necessary for looking at velocity magnitude per se, but if there are other things we want to do integrations, um, we will need those state variables. From this point, I will go ahead and calculate an additional variable, so um, velocity magnitude. And I won't do this on demand. I'm just going to calculate it. It's a small solution, so it shouldn't take very long. Once we have velocity magnitude at our disposal, we'll want to go ahead and set one of our contour variables to velocity magnitude, which will now show up as a variable. Once we have that velocity magnitude information available, we can use it to contour our slice, for example. So we'll use velocity magnitude, and that's a simple way to evaluate uh, the vector field m along the uh, wing. So right now I have the slice basically going through the main body, but ultimately we would like to look at, say, uh, a slice near the wing itself. Okay, so now that we have uh, what I would consider to be a reasonable view, uh, I'll make this translucent just so we can see through the slice. Much of the new toolbar capabilities are available in uh, the second release of TechBlot 360. This release will be available in the October time frame, but it's in beta testing today, so if you're interested, um, please let us know and we can get you a copy of this. Or if it's past October 2014, this just will be in the main product. I'm going to save out now the frame style. And the frame style, for simplicity, I'll put it on the web or just on the desktop. And the idea here is that uh, we can take advantage of the frame style and use that to uh, work with the other files. So we have three solutions we're going to evaluate. And I will call this uh, velocity magnitude style. All right, and I can use that later. So at this point, I have the primary view, which I'll call primary, and uh, the second view I created of the same data set. So I'm going to put this in slash base to indicate that this is the base solution. Similarly, I'll put this in as base. Okay, I'm going to add a page. We'll make this the same primary, and we'll call this uh, lower. So the idea is that what I'm going to do now is load in the solution with the lower wing. To do that, I'll just pop in here. It's a PLT file, and it's the uh, lower case. I'm going to take advantage of, uh, so we have this style similarly to the last example. I'll go ahead and save this frame style, um, and we'll just call this primary. And so when I go into the lower now, I can load that frame style, uh, which is primary. And it will show basically the same uh, image as the first case. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, the only difference here is the frame is a uh, different size. But in general, it's basically the same. All right, let's go to that second. Um, remember that in this case we do not have velocity magnitude, so we have to set up the field variables. So for the state variables, we're going to use pressure and density, and we'll select our velocity variables, and we'll select pressure, we'll select density, and uh, we'll now calculate that additional variable of velocity magnitude, and so that'll simply calculate uh, that variable and now we'll uh, add a new page and we'll pop into 3D so it's just going to bring in the geometry and I will load in that second style which was the velocity magnitude and I'll hit open and it's going to apply that same style so now we have this is um, the second view lower 
So we have now uh, the lower, which should be basically the same view, here and here. And we have the primary views as well. Now I want to look at all of them for comparison. So I'm going to add an additional page. We'll call this, um, let's say, primary compare. Okay. And what I'll do is go over to the primary. I'm going to select this frame and I'll hit control C. I'll go into primary compare and I'll paste it. And it'll take a second to open. Then I'll go into the case with the lower wing configuration. I'll copy that. Also go here and paste it. You'll see that there are three frames. We'll go to this frame, bring it to the front. This is the blank frame. I really don't need it. I'll just uh, delete that here. And I'll take advantage of a tool that we include in TechPlot, which allows you to tile the frames very easily. Uh, and we'll just look at a side-by-side -side comparison. You'll notice that they're currently independent. I'm going to link the frames together using frame linking. So I'm going to use a group. I'll use group 5 uh, just to keep it different. And we'll link the view for 3D view for group 5. And then we'll go to the second frame here. And you'll notice that it's group 1. We'll move it to group 5, 3D view, and apply settings to all groups. And so now the, the views are the same and we can actually look at specifically uh, the wing position. I don't really need the, this menu. Okay, at this point we may actually want to remove those slices so I can hide the slice groups. Oops. Thankfully we do have control Z. Uh, I guess I had selected the wing. I uh, just need to hide that slice. Okay. So there are the, the two configurations. We can look at the basic pressures on the wing. And if we want to then evaluate the vector field, we can turn on the vector on each of these to see whether or not there's any substantial differences in the surface uh, vectors of the two configurations. And you can see that there isn't a tremendous difference. Mind you that uh, the lower configuration is likely getting a fair amount of turbulent air coming from the canopy, uh, which is likely decreasing the efficiency of the downforce on the rear wing. Uh, we could quantify that if we wanted to do integration, but for this example, <coughs> this is all we need to do. So this is a quick overview of the workup of the data from Carolet. You can see now we have our primary and secondary views for the base and lower configuration as well as a comparison and we've used linking so that we can evaluate the two solutions and actually interrogate them in a linked way to evaluate differences. In the next demo I'll show you how you can take the three cases uh, we didn't talk about the engine configuration into a project in Chorus. Thanks for watching.